Hi, welcome. Today we will analyze one of the most amazing chess games that ever been played. I'm talking about the Evergreen game, a game between Adolf Anderson and Jean Dufresne. This is a 19th century game, so this will be romantic at the extreme, because they won't be defending, they will attack until the death. So this game uh, is a must in my opinion, uh, for a player to improve, you need to study this game at least one time. So let's jump to our video. But before that, did you know that almost 87% of the viewers isn't subscribed? Why don't you like me? I'm a great person and my goal here on this channel is to help you to improve. To do that, you just need to do a simple thing. You just need to subscribe. To subscribe, uh, first, it's free and you will help a lot this channel to improve. And as you know, every day I put a new video about chess. And well, if you enjoy the content, of course, you can always uh, push the notifications on, you can like the videos, and if you have any suggestion or critics, you can always put on the comments below, or uh, talk with me directly by chess.com, my nickname is dark underline attack. So, let's jump to our video. So, first we will talk a little bit about Adolf Anderson. So, he has been the number one of the world and he has born at Prussia and he has lived at Prussia. Prussia was the, let's call the old Germany. Germany doesn't uh, exist on those days and uh, instead of the Germany existed uh, several independent states and Prussia was the biggest one, I think, and later they became the, the country, the Germany country. So, so he was a maths teacher and his true passion was chess and you're going to see his level, it was enormous, it was a giant playing chess about his style, he was aggressive, uh, tactical player, doing lots of uh, sacrifices and always creating problems to his uh, opponents. Um, this, in my opinion, is one of his best games, but of course he is known uh, by his immortal game uh, against, uh, against uh, Lionel Kierzerski. Uh, we will see that game later on another video too. So, about uh, another project, uh, he was a editor of a chess magazine. Uh, I don't know how to say this name. Skatchezeitung, I think. I hope this isn't uh, wrong. And uh, uh, he, he, he had a very important um, uh, it, it was very important to, to develop and help to the development of chess. So this guy uh, was amazing. About his um, level, well, I've been studying at uh, chess metrics the level of the two players and Adolf Anderson has been number one of the planet uh, seven different months. Uh, according to this website. And uh, about his uh, peak, uh, his peak has been 2744. So uh, it's, it was kind of high. And um, about his, uh, uh, his standings, uh, he, he has been always on the top 10 of the world. And as you're seeing, uh, at 1851, 1852, his rating was uh, 26.05. Uh, so this guy was strong. He was very strong. And don't forget that on those years, uh, Paul Morphy has competed too. So, of course, uh, most of the time he has been number two. But as you're seeing here, he, he was number one too. Uh, and with 43 years old. So this guy was uh, quite uh, strong. About his opponents, uh, he was a teacher um, of his opponents, so Adolf Anderson was uh, the mentor of Jean Dufresne, and uh, Jean Dufresne, uh, I think, was a journalist. I've been studying to uh, his life, and um, he, his best standing was number six of the world. Not bad. About uh, his rating, well, highest rating, uh, 2470, so this guy 
uh, if he lived nowadays was almost grandmaster so we are talking about two very very strong players uh, so uh, we need to see this game with uh, critical thinking because of course uh, you're going to see oh this is romantic they don't know want to how to defend uh, the the positional game is too strange but no that's not true uh, the truth is is that on those years uh, that wasn't important the positional play and uh, the player who calculates best normally was the winner of the game so let's go to our <laughs> to our game and i think you're going uh, to enjoy a lot because well these are two giants playing chess so uh, the game has been played at 1852 and according to chess metrics, Adolf Anderson at 2604 and Jean Dufes in 2430. So two very strong players. And of course, feed doesn't exist on those days. So uh, according to the literature, uh, Adolf Anderson was the number one or number two of the world. So he was very strong. So um, let's go to the um, to the game. So. Uh, Adolf Anderson is playing with white and Jean Dufresne is playing with black. And of course, this is an informal game because official games, well, doesn't exist on those days. So he will start with e4, of course, if we are playing at the 19th century, <laughs> we need to start with e4 to attack. And after e5, knight f3, knight c6, okay, he will play the Italian. And yes, you will enjoy this a lot because after bishop c5, what is the most interesting way of creating problems for black? <laughs> yes, the Evans Gambit. And if you haven't seen the, uh, the video, you need to see the video because we uh, have a video just about the Evans Gambit. So after b4, of course, black is forced to take the, the pawn. And here, uh, Adolf Anderson will continue as the rules say. So, c4 and after bishop to a5 is correct too, he will continue with d4. So, of course, uh, after he plays uh, the Evans Gambit, it's kind of obvious that um, Anderson will attack until the finish of this game. So, uh, why is that? Because when you play a gambit, you need to create problems. You need to create complications to your opponent. So, here, uh, he, Black will continue with pawn takes. And after that, he will continue with castle kingside. The ideas are quite a, of simple. If pawn takes... This will be too complicated for black because we have queen to b3 creating problems on f7 square. Of course, this will happen too because black will advance the pawn and he will play the queen to b3. So the idea is to create problems from the start of the game. And here, Dufres needs to, to answer something. And well, if I was playing with black, probably I would play queen to one of these squares. Why is that? Well, uh, because we need to defend. And of course, this is ugly because bishop can take the knight. It's, it's too, too ugly. So we don't know, want to think about that. Here, black has uh, played queen to f6, but probably queen e7, it's easier because if uh, queen plays to e7, we will continue with rook. And after d6, we have an interesting idea we sack the pawn because if pawn takes we have bishop a3 creating pressure to the queen and uh, black will have difficulties to, to play this game uh, of course uh, the alternative isn't uh, better because this will be uh, very complicated too uh, after queen plays to f6 of course we can always create problems uh, by several different ways but my suggestion is you to play exactly the same as adolf anderson because he advanced the pawn and the thing is that he is gaining central space creating problems to black here uh, black has continued with queen to g6 but let's see what if knight would take well here this would be devastating for black because rook would play to e1 and look to this combination this doesn't happen but if uh, of course he calculated that i'm certain of that he, if uh, um, this happens black would continue with d6 bishop queen takes takes and now queen check 
this would lead to a victory because of queen check and after that it's over <laughs> so too strong we have seen several moves on this combination so when he advanced the pawn he calculated that so to improve you need to calculate very very well all of the moves that you do in your own games because if you failed the analysis of one move this will lead to a draw or even a loss so you need to be careful with that calculate pretty well how do you work that simple train 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 so you need to do puzzles you need to solve a lot of different teams of um, tactics and uh, with the volume of the training you will uh, improve this area of the game so let's continue so after e5 uh, here black will continue with queen to g6 and after that rook to e1 to uh, guarantee that this pawn is secure and uh, will create problems until the end of the game so the, here black continued with knight to e7 and after that bishop a3 is interesting not the best best move according to the fish nowadays probably bishop a3 isn't the best approach but to play queen d1 to create pressure on the pawn that is on d3 this would lead to a continuation like d5 according that black would play the best move and after Pawn takes, pawn takes, bishop takes. In my opinion, this position, of course, is playable for both sides, but the B d6 pawn is a problem because uh, is weak, is not being defended by any piece. So let's go to the position. So here, e has continued with bishop a3, and after that, black has committed um, an imprecision. So black has continued with b5. Uh, here, the most correct would be d5 to help to develop the bishop on c8. So here he continued with b5. And after that, well, we need to think a little bit. How would we continue? Well, if black is giving up a pawn, let's take the pawn. So queen takes b5. And after rook attacks the king, the queen, sorry, you, you need to be careful, very, very careful, because one move is correct and the other would lead, lead to um, a loss. So here we need to think about this move and this move. And well, here he has made the correct move, queen to a4. But if he had uh, played the queen here, this would continue with bishop b6 and the queen will be lost because the only safe square is um, queen to b5 and after that the bishop can sacrifice on f2 leading to the loss of the queen because of the presence of the rook so complicated this stuff so of course he continued the best way so he has played the queen to a4 and after that this continued with bishop b6 and the game is almost finishing because here white will continue with knight d2 and after bishop to b7 here he will continue uh, occupying the central uh, squares don't forget the importance of the center is that uh, you want to attack central squares and occupy them and then if you achieve those two goals you will create problems to your opponents so here the best approach is to continue with knight to e4 and after that uh, black will continue with queen to f5 and this is a terrible blunder so here this game was already complicated for black but still possible so uh, for example uh, the fish says that d2 probably is the only correct approach to continue this game why is that because white will need to take the pawn of course because the pawn is attacking the rook and because of that we will be forced to lose a tempo and this tempo is uh, sufficient for black to try to rearrange his pieces and try to protect all the abilities on uh, the game of course the the game is always ugly for for black but okay this was playable so here black has continued with queen to f5 and after that of course this will continue with bishop to d3 what is the idea quite uh, quite simple the idea is to play knight f6 attacking the queen or even knight to d6 attacking the queen so of course 
it's uh, imperative to play the queen. So Dufresne has played uh, queen to h5. And after that, uh, well, Adolf Anderson will make a very romantic move. Beautiful move. I enjoy a lot. If you want, you can put on pause. But the thing is that this move isn't the best. Uh, according to the computers, this move uh, loses all of the all the advantage. So, as Magnus Carlsen say, uh, I don't need to play pretty. Uh, I just need to to win my own games. Uh, okay, true. But the move that Adolf Anderson has done is beautiful, but it's not the most correct one. So he has made this move. Before we continue, I'm going to show what was the correct move. Here, according to the computers, the most correct move is to play knight to g3. Why is that? Because here, black will need to defend. And after that, knight attacks, takes, takes. And after knight to e7, uh, this, for example, is a blunder because queen can take the pawn. So the correct uh, answer would be rook to d8. Of course, according to the fish, this was the most correct way of playing and white would be uh, playing a completely one position. But the thing is that he has played knight to f6. And what is the difference? Well, the difference is that it's possible to survive to this position for black. The truth is that we are human. And in my opinion, it's very complicated to survive. Nowadays, probably the best players of the world would sur survive this position. But a uh, common mortal like me, no, never in my life. I would lose this with checkmate, I'm certain of that. So the um, E has continued with pawn takes, it's the correct approach. And after that, Adolf Anderson, of course, will continue taking um, the pawn. Of course, what is the idea? Simple. The bishop is attacking because uh, the knight is pinned, the pawn is attacking, the rook is attacking, everyone is attacking the knight. So here, black needs to continue um, developing, creating problems, trying to, to create counterplay. And the counterplay is quite, quite, uh, quite of easy, is to take the knight on f3. And here, uh, Adolf Anderson will not play the best move. The best move is just to play bishop e4, but I comprehend that he hasn't played that because this is a positional play. So here, uh, according to the computers, bishop e4, queen attacks, and after g3, the position is completely playable for white because, well, we are attacking uh, everything. Uh, but the thing is that, of course, we are playing at the 19th century. So here, he has played rook to d1, and nowadays, lots of persons discuss this move, rook to d1, because it's very interesting, because black can win this position, taking the knight. And that's the reason this game is very interesting, because uh, according, uh, if you put on the computer, uh, the computer will say, oh, black is one with four points. But then, if you wait a little bit, the, the computer will say, hmm, half point, one point, one point and a half. Okay, this is good for white. So the game is so abstract that it isn't easy to evaluate correctly this position because both kings are open. So the thing is that it's, it's complicated to evaluate this, this position. So here, uh, the continuation is beautiful because it will find the most correct approach. The move is, have you found the move? Rook takes knight. Beautiful stuff, beautiful stuff. And the thing is that the, the black's king is completely exposed, so he needs to take. And after that, we will continue with one of the most brilliant sacrifices that I ever seen on a chess game. If you see that, <laughs> you're a genius. You're my idol. Because the move queen takes g7 is art. Mona Lisa on chess, uh, Picasso. 
everything you want. This move is beautiful, beautiful, because white is exploring this check. So after, of course, this king needs to take, because if uh, he played that, bishop takes or queen takes, would lead to a checkmate. Uh, so king has taken, and now you need to be precise with the continuation. And the continuation is bishop to f5. And the thing is that this queen cannot take because the bishop is giving check. It's a double check. Uh, the queen cannot take because the rook is giving check. And after king goes to e8, we can continue giving checkmate in two moves. Bishop d d d7, sorry, king to f8 and bishop checkmate. Incredible. I don't know how it's possible to be so good at chess, but Adolf Anderson had this uh, uh, capacity. This guy played a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So uh, we have seen one of my favorite chess games. Uh, according to, um, to chess.com, the evaluation of this game is, uh, is good, but of course, because of the... Um, Positional problems isn't 90%. Uh, is Adolf Anderson has played for 88%, and about um, Jean Dufresne has played for 70%. Of course, uh, I comprehend because uh, it's normal that uh, they fail the positional play because we are seeing a game that has been played in 19th century and in 1852. So, uh, internet doesn't exist, neither computers, smartphones, nothing, 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 nothing. So, uh, it's, it's brilliant to see that they had on those days capabilities of giving this kind of uh, material and this kind of quality uh, on their own games. So for today, it's all. I hope you enjoyed this video. And don't forget, if you're not uh, subscribed, please subscribe and you're going to give a very big help to this channel to grow. So um, tomorrow at the same hour, I will be waiting for you here on the channel uh, to see more chess. Till tomorrow, have a good night. Bye-bye. <laughs>